In this video, we shall cover the following topics related to karma or action. 1. The connotations of the word karma. 2. The importance of intent in karma. 3. How karma is related to the Newton's law. 4. An understanding into the three great forms of karma. 5. Link of karma with liberation. 6. The fine differences between a karma and samanya karma. 7. The transcendental position of a karma. The word karma has two possible connotations. One represents action or activity, while the other is the result of action. The other is when one receives the fruit of action that connotes karma. However, these two connotations revolve around a single concept of action. It becomes important to understand nevertheless the motive of karma or action because it is the intention or motive that fuels the artillery of actions and reactions. Without gas, a vehicle cannot be operated. Similarly, without an intent, no action can trigger further actions or reactions. It is to be understood that the very intent of material life and the universe is karma alone. Without intent, there can be no karma and without karma, there will be no gas to run the processes of the universe. However, there is a superior type of karma which is motiveless or which has intent beyond the universe. Such an action can be compared to Newton's first law of motion where he discusses an example of an object that keeps moving forever without any force acting on it. We shall discuss this type of karma at the end of the video because this is the most matured form of karma. It is very rare to find an object moving forever on a frictionless path and it is equally rare to find an action which is not producing result. Much contrary to Newton's third law that every action shall have an equal and opposite reaction, especially in this real world, if there is an object moving in this world, it is naturally faced with an opposing force of friction of equal and opposite strength, which will retard and finally stop the motion of the object altogether. Similar to the example of Newton's laws, there are three known types of karma which have been discussed in the Sanatana Dharma scriptures. Lord Krishna has adequately described these three types of karma in great detail throughout the Bhagavad Gita, especially in the fourth chapter of the scripture. The three types of karma are Samanya Karma, Vikarma and Akarma. A literal translation of this term is ordinary action which do not go against the scriptural injunctions, actions that go against the scriptural injunctions and actions that transcend the scope of the preceding two types of actions. The last karma which is called akarma are necessarily actions which are in line with the scriptures but those which do not bear fruit. On the other hand, the first type of karma which is Samanya karma is bound to produce a reaction or fruits. We shall understand the three types of karma with practical examples so that a common man can immediately derive immense benefits from the knowledge revealed in this video. Before we begin with the three types of karma, it is important to understand the fueling aspect of karma that is responsible for all our experiences, both good and bad. It is important to understand that life is a limitless canvas on which there are unlimited, unbounded sketches. These sketches are formed out of the pen of karma. These sketches dictate the course of man's unlimited lifetimes. Man's unlimited lifetimes go on to produce further sketches which free will endlessly. Hence, karma is limitless without beginning and apparently without an end. The end of karma is only attained when one qualifies for liberation. When a person finishes all his karmas by intelligent living in accordance 
with the elevated scriptures he automatically falls out of the canvas of karma never to resurface again it is usually a complaint of the common man that good people suffer more than bad people in fact many say that the bad people enjoy life while the good ones continue to suffer this is not an uncommon observation it should be understood that karma is not a one life phenomenon as explained earlier our karmas follow us in every birth and give us the reactions in every subsequent life it is by the power of our karmas that we take a body so a person who may be exhibiting evil tendencies may have accumulated some good reactions from earlier lifetimes through some favorable actions performed in those lifetimes but that does not mean that the person is a pure being he would also have pent up seeds of unfavorable karmic tendencies because of which he is continuing to execute bad actions and yet reaping favorable benefits of previous lifetimes but it is certain that such a being is exhausting his good karmas and accumulating bad ones in the current lifetime the results of which he shall reap towards the end of this lifetime or in subsequent lifetimes this will happen after he has exhausted the balance result of previously performed actions thus it is very difficult to predict human life within the limited purview of a single lifetime or by analyzing a few years of someone's life it is important for us to have a holistic view of the concept of karma when one performs karma which is in accordance with the scriptures such a karma is called samanya karma now what types of karma are legitimate this subject has to be dealt with within the modernistic purview only then can one relate to this all encompassing concept that rules a living entity's life within and beyond this universe when one performs work or actions motivated by desires that do not obstruct the rights or esteem of others then those actions can be safely regarded as samanya karma however there are certain actions which are abominable and these should be avoided although they may not directly or indirectly affect other humans for example it is inappropriate to take intoxicants gamble and eat unwholesome food obtained through violence and to have illicit sex which is outside marriage even though we may be modern in many ways these acts should be avoided because these acts envoom the seeds of bad repercussions in the future when we perform work that does not hamper anyone and at the same time gives peace to us that is recognized as samanya karma going for work earning for the family doing business but with a clean heart without the intention to cheat etc are samanya karma however almost all of these actions are bound to give reactions they may both be favorable and unfavorable to some extent this is because the person doing different shows has no control of mind and hence he may infuse within those approved actions moods which may be inappropriate or undesirable since one is not conscious of one's mind's state there may arise unfavorable outcomes of presumed good actions because of the state of unawareness which is inherent in the mind of man the intent although may be genuine can be polluted thereby giving inappropriate or poisonous fruits to some extent these good and bad results will trigger further actions and the branching continues forever thus the intent and the mood that go behind samanya karma or actions approved by the scriptures decide the outcomes the action per se does not affect the outcoming life experiences but it is the intention and clouding of the mind at the time of action that affect the samanya karma vikarma or bad actions are dependent equally on the action itself and also on the intention of action 
In the case of Samanya Karma, it is mainly the motivation and intention that poisons or elevates the action. In the case of Vikarma, both the actions and intention are polluted. It is bound to give sinful reactions and no less. However, the least understood type of karma is akarma or actionless action. These actions are similar to the samanya karma, but there is a huge difference between samanya karma and akarma. In akarma, the actions are performed with the mind fixated on the supreme. Akarma means the action is flowing out of our very core. Such actions are beyond any motivation. The mind is purified to such an extent that there is no expectation from the action. The actions performed for the sake of the highest supreme without any expectation is a karma. However, the preparatory stage to produce a karma is a protracted one. Unless one purifies the mind and develops insight into one's being, Beyond the mind-body constitution, a karma is not possible. Unless the mind is crystallized and purged of all its impurities, worldly desire and intentions cannot evaporate. With worldly desires and intentions in mind, all actions fall under the category of Samanya Karma or Vikarma. However, when one rises above the worldly platform and genuinely performs actions, which are self-initiated by Supreme Will alone, a karma results. Samanya karma and vikarma are performed, while a karma simply happens without the engine of personal motivated intention. Samanya karma and vikarma are worldly, while a karma is the blessed fruit of the stage of liberation.